Over the weekend, Texas A&M added two players to the class of 2025. Mike Elko has got the ball rolling. You are Locked On Aggies, your daily podcast on the Texas A&M Aggies. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome on into Locked On Aggies. I'm your host, Andrew Stefaniak. Thanks for making Locked On Aggies your first listen every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. So, over the weekend, Mike Elko adds two players to the 2025 class. John Petaway, four-star uh, safety corner combo DB, and four-star linebacker Kelvion Riggins. So I want to talk about you know kind of what this means, and then we'll talk about each of these players individually. But what this means, Coach Elko's getting it going on the recruiting trail. He added the four-star offensive lineman in the 2024 class. Last week, you bring in two guys now in this 2025 class. Recruiting was a concern of mine for Coach Elko. And not, you know, at Duke, his recruiting classes just weren't. And it's not his fault. I mean, it's just, it's the, I think it's the reality at Duke. At Duke, it's just, it's hard to recruit at a high level, you know, there's just a lot of Duke isn't the place unless it's, unless it's on the hardwood that, that there's a lot of good recruiting going on. So it wasn't a concern, you know, I had for, for coach Echo because we knew, Hey, he doesn't need five stars to win at Duke. You know, hopefully that'll be the case at A&M, but he will have this talent. And that was kind of my, my thought was A&M sells itself. The SEC sells itself. Um, you know, the the support financially Texas A&M has on the recruiting trail support uh, helps itself. So what, I, what I'm kind of getting at here is I, I thought that Coach Elko, even if he recruiting maybe wasn't his strong suit as a coach, would be fine at Texas A&M because of all the help and support that he has. And I kind of think that that's been a reality, but – I've been very impressed with what he's done. The way he he's closed with the 2024 class, the way he's starting to get going on the 2025 class. I talk about it all the time. I know it's like beating the uh, beating the drum here, but the recruiting is building relationships, and it takes a while. So Coach Elko is you know tried to catch up as much as he could in the 2024 class, and he is now really catching up in 2025 and starting to land some guys. Hopefully these additions, you know, kind of get the ball rolling. Sometimes you need that. Sometimes you need to get the ball rolling. I remember I did an episode last year. Um, around, it was right when I took over the show, you know, in in early summer. And I kind of was talking about like, should we be, you know, how many Texas A&M only has? I think it was like seven commits at the time in that class, in the 2024 class. And I I had some people early on in the comments saying like Andrew should should we be concerned not a lot of commits yet and and so I looked back and, and did some digging on the previous history of AM classes, you know it's normal summer is when recruiting is heavy you know you're gonna see a ton of additions this 2025 class come in in the July you know in those months so no I'm 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 looking forward to how this 2025 class comes out but. You got three guys right now. It's currently ranked 21st. And I think you're going to see it climb and climb and climb and climb. But Texas A&M had two football players. And I think Coach Elko is going to prove, hey, I can recruit. So, no, I wasn't concerned about Coach Elko's. I wasn't, it wasn't a, a concern about his ability to recruit. It was just, you know, he hadn't been head coach long. And, he, you know, he was at Duke where he wasn't recruiting these high-level players. So will he be able to do it in the SEC when he's going to be asked to get some of this top-tier talent? And he's proven 
with what he's done closing the 2024 class and what he's already done getting rocking and rolling on the 25 class and how well he did in the portal, I think Coach Elko has proven that he and his staff can recruit. So I'm really anxious to see where this 2025 class ends up. But now getting into these two players, we'll start talking about the John Petaway. And <clears throat> he's the type of guy I, I love a defensive back who is incredibly versatile. And that is exactly what Petaway is. He can play anywhere. Anywhere you stick him, he can play. I, the, another guy watching the tape on him, and listen, you know, I want to add this point because I feel like I talk about how much I love tape all the time. But you got to remember, the, these players are four stars, you know, for a reason. The tape's going to be good. The, the tape's never going to be bad. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to ever going to, and, and it's also highlight tape. So, you know, you really have to go to a game to see the, the bad plays. But speaking to Petaway, what I loved about the tape is he can play anywhere. He, I saw him um, in the slot. I saw him at the um, natural safety. I saw him out in the, um, on playing the outside uh, corner position. I mean, he plays everywhere in the defensive backfield. I saw him get after the quarterback a few times. I saw him not, and, I, and this is another thing I talk about all the time, being able to help in the run game. I love when a defensive back isn't afraid to come up and, and make a tackle. There was one play where um, the running back got a, a, a handoff to the outside, and, and it was the only thing between the end zone was pet away. And what did he do? He came up and made an incredible tackle in space. He's not afraid to hit. He's not afraid to hit hard. He also is a player who had a huge offer list. I, I talk about this a lot too. And this is the same for Riggins, who we'll talk about here in a minute. But, you know, looking at this, listen to this offer list. So first, listen to this offer list for Petaway. Arkansas, Georgia, LSU, Miami, Ohio State, Oklahoma, Ole Miss, Oregon. I mean, it, it goes on. Everybody wanted this guy. And these, you know, the, these aren't interests. These are those are all offers. Everybody wanted this guy. Mike Elko got him. That is exciting. You know, this isn't a guy that, you know, had offers from Arizona. I mean, he did. I, you know, like I, he did have an offer from Arizona, but I'm saying like it wasn't like his offer list was, um, you know, Houston and Memphis and and um, SMU and Texas State and Texas A&M. You know, that wasn't his offer list. His offer list was the top dogs in college football, and he picks Texas A&M. That gets me excited. But once again, I love I love the versatility. I love that he's he, he's he's a sound tackler. He's not afraid to tackle in space he's not afraid to to make open field tackles and and that's going to be huge you know sometimes hey when you're a corner and a running back gets outside it's you like i said on that one play it's you in the end zone um he's also incredibly fast which i mean you know you have to be i'm i'm, I'm not saying that you often see a, a defensive back who's slow but i'm i'm saying he has elite speed there was one play where he was able to track down a player and make a, a big tackle where he had to really pick up some speed and catch up to this a receiver, and it was just really impressive. And, and one thing I talk about, too, and this this applies to both Riggins and Petaway, these are two players both playing their um, – that have both played their high school football in the state of Texas, and that is so incredibly valuable in my opinion. I mean, first of all, there's no better hotbed when it comes to recruiting than the state of Texas, but the state of Texas produces the best football talent. I mean, I, I would, you know, Florida, California, and Texas are the best places. Uh, so a lot of good talent, talent comes out of Georgia, but I mean, you know, good players come out of these states. And I was talking about how competitive the high school football is in Texas. We all know this. This isn't a secret. You know, this isn't a surprise. Talented players come out of the state of Texas. Both of these guys that we're going to talk about today, Petaway and Riggins, both played, or you know, both play in high school. So, 
Ladies and gentlemen, this is just this is a solid addition. I mean, a top 200, a top 150 player in the class in the 24-7 composite rankings, 138th, uh, 5'10, 175 is Petaway. I, I just everything about him. Love the tape, love the offer list, love that he's a versatile player who can play anywhere in the defensive backfield. He's gonna be a guy that plays early on in his Texas AM career, and he's a really good football player. You know what's funny? Um, I think that. Tape wise, I get more excited about Riggins tape than I did Petaways, but Petaway is the better long long term player who I think you're going to see being an NFL draft pick at some point. So that's my thoughts on Dejon Petaway. Excited to see what he does in his Texas A&M career. Uh, top 150 player in the class, huge addition for Coach Elko and company. Now we're going to talk about Kelvion Riggins, the linebacker. We'll talk about. Hey, what does this addition mean? Really, really like the tape on this kid. We'll have that conversation coming up right here on Locked on Aggies. But first, I want to tell you about our wonderful friends over at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and leveled up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusion supply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to you as customers. So... Now it is time to talk about the other massive get for the Aggies in the 2025 class, and that would be Kelvion Riggins, the linebacker. Um, I see him listed some places at six foot 210, some places have him at five foot 11, um, 205 pounds. But um, we're gonna we're gonna list him at six foot 210 here at Locked On Aggies because it sounds just a little bit better. And I always love, every time I see it, I got to comment on it. But nothing makes me laugh more than the five foot 11 and a half thing. It's like, say you're six foot. Say you're six foot. I, come on. You know, I, you know, I'm six five and a half. Like, that's what I'm, that's how tall I am. And I'm, gonna, I'm not going to say six five. I'm going to say I'm six six. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to round down, but I'm not going to say it in a half because that's just the reality here. So, Everybody gives me a hard time for that, but that's just I don't hey never say the half. Round up a little bit, don't round down. But um, like I said a minute ago, the tape on Riggins, I really, really liked. And y'all know I can get excited about some tape. Uh, there was just something about he's for a linebacker, and I know that you know he's not one of these like six foot one, 230 pound dudes who's, who's just a thumper and he, and, he, and he's a little bit slower linebacker. I know that he's not built like that, but man, is he fast. I mean, it just seemed like he, the ball is snapped and you, I, you close your eyes, you open them and he's got the, the running back wrapped up for a two yard loss in the backfield. I mean, it, I've never seen more explosive linebacker tape than I've seen than I saw here from Riggins. I mean, it, 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 he is just so quick. His ability to get from point A to point B. I mean, it, it, it's you can snap your fingers and he's made a tackle. He fights through blocks really well. You know, this is something I talk about a lot with linebackers. We see we see a lot. You know, you'll see um, a, a guard pull, or you'll see uh, a, a, the linebacker climb from. They'll get off. You know, they'll, they'll double team up to the linebacker. And you're, you'll see receivers block, and you know it gets it gets um, what's the word? It gets jammed up, and it's hard to to make a tackle. That's the whole point of blockers. But he finds a way to get through the blockers and get to the running back, the quarterback, whoever has the football, receiver on the screen, whatever, and make the tackle. I love seeing that. I hate seeing linebackers get. 
you know, gobbled up in um, in blocks and, and or, or not even really blocks, but just kind of get like, you know, in, in, in crowded space and they can't fight through. He's always able to fight through and get to the tackler. That was that's one thing I always pay attention to. He doesn't get lost in the fold when it comes to a lot of players. You know, if it's a short side run or something like that, he always finds a way to sneak through and make the tackle. Um, You know, so like I said, fights through blocks well. He's an incredibly sound tackler. And I talked a little bit about that with Petaway. Petaway, he, you know, he's not out here hitting. He's tackling. Riggins is even better. He is a, a, a I mean, just textbook, wrap up, take to the ground. I love seeing that. How many times, how many missed tackles did we see last season? You know, us did that did us Aggie fans have to watch uh, endure the pain of seeing missed tackle after missed tackle? There's nothing more frustrating. Missed tackle, missing a tackle is like missing a free throw, which we will have a basketball conversation here in a little bit. Sorry, I just can't let us have an exciting Monday. We're, we're gonna talk about the basketball game, but um m- missing tackles. Is frustrating. You know, opposing players breaking tackles is frustrating. The way Riggins wraps up and tackles in a sound way is going to keep players from breaking tackles, adding four or five yards on the end of runs that they shouldn't have had. That's what that and that stuff matters. I mean, you know, think about it's third and four, and you got a guy, he's there in the backfield and you miss the tackle and he picks up five yards, gets a first down in the big spot. Missing tackles can cost you football games. So being a player that I watched the high school tape and he's already a sound tackler uh, form-wise in high school means that that is going to carry over into uh, college. So um, I love that from Riggins. And then let's go through once again the – oh, and he's ranked as the 228th player in the rankings. 24-7 sports doesn't have him ranked very high, but when it comes to – the um, someone else does because the composite rankings have him 228th. But once again, let's go through this offer list because this is what I'm talking about. This is the stuff that matters. Arkansas, Auburn, Florida, Georgia, LSU, Miami, Ohio State, Ohio State twice. That's funny. Ohio State's listed twice here. So Ohio State liked them so much that they offered them two different times. Um, Ole Miss. Tennessee, Texas, USC. I mean, everybody wanted this guy. Everybody wanted this guy, and the Aggies got him. This is what I'm talking about. This is the stuff that matters. When everybody wants a player and you're still able to go get him, that those are the recruiting battles that matter. Those are the ones that winning at the end of the day are, are going to be a big deal long term. And that's what you got here in Riggins. So um and linebacker room wise, I'm really happy with the linebacker class you brought in this season. Or if I'm sorry for the 2024 class. So let's recap that here. Uh, so at the linebacker class this year, you've got Tristan Jernigan, who is a player that I am extremely, extremely excited about. Then you've also got um, Jordan uh, Lockhart. So. I like the linebackers. And then in the uh, in the transfer portal, you also have uh, Scooby Williams from Florida and then the guy I'm excited about in Alex Howard from Youngstown State. So um, the linebacker room is in a good spot. And going ahead and getting the 2025 class started with the bang in the linebacker room is another thing that gets me really excited. So um, great addition, ladies and gentlemen, two great additions over the weekend. Exciting, exciting news to bring in two players. I think Coach Elko is going to knock this 25 class out of the ball park. I'm very excited to see where it ends up and to see, you know, in, in when, we, when we get close to the kickoff and next football season where this class sits. Very exciting time to be a Texas A&M football fan, ladies and gentlemen. Two huge additions. Now, while it's very exciting to look at this Football recruiting class, looking back at the basketball game, is a little bit frustrating. The Aggies lose to Ole Miss on Saturday. This is one of those games, you know, a buddy buddy of mine, someone I really respect in the media industry, 
uh, a guy named Daryl Daprich. He's an Auburn guy. I had him on the show at SEC Media Days, but he always talks about when it comes to SEC basketball, this is or conference basketball. It's not just SEC basketball. He talks about a home win is a point. A home loss, you subtract two points. A road win, you add two points. A road loss, you subtract a point. And what frustrates me about Texas A&M's basketball season so far is they have two home losses. You can't lose home games. And you've lost home games to teams you shouldn't be losing home games to in LSU and Ole Miss. I mean, I know Ole Miss has had a better season than many anticipated. They, they've, you know, I – I think Chris Beard's a good basketball coach, but I, I think I thought it would take him a little bit of time to kind of get going. Um, and they've kind of cooled off a little bit. I think they were one of those teams that they didn't really play many people. They got they got a win over a good Memphis team, and then it was kind of like, okay, this is this is a really good um, basketball team. I, I, I didn't really buy the hype, but two home losses, ladies and gentlemen, it, it's it's frustrating. You can't lose home games. So doing that, losing to LSU at home, losing to Ole Miss at home, it just puts you in a tough spot. And once again, I know there are two teams that they're middle of the road SEC teams, you know, seven and eight when it comes to um, the SEC kind of in that area. But at the end of the day, you can't lose to those teams. You can't do it. You can't lose to the middle of the road teams at home. This is getting concerning. I'll have to look at bracketology and see where Texas A&M stands. Because it, it, it's getting to a point where, like, can you make the NCAA tournament? I think it is starting to get a little bit. I'm not. It, 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 we're get, Losing home games does not help your cause. Losing, dropping in the net rankings does not help your cause. So I, when I look at this, this LSU game to start SEC play and this Ole Miss game on Saturday, it's not. It's frustrating. And. Losing a close game like that, too, where Wade has 30. He's 10 to 20 from the field. And he goes, what was he, 5 and 9 from 3? Yeah, 5 and 9 from 3. It, it, it's frustrating that you're not getting any production offensively from really anybody but Wade and Boots. I, you know, I, I it, this was a basketball season where I, I thought that Coach Buzz Williams didn't do a great job in the portal. I know that he went and got a couple of guys, but nobody that really, and I mean, that really got me super excited. I know that might be a bold take. I know, you know, um, Lawrence and Carter, I, I, fine additions, but I, I just think that this basketball program, when you have players like Boots and you have Wade Taylor, it really felt like you were one home run addition in the portal. And I don't think those guys were home run additions. I think they were fine adds to an SEC basketball team, but they were not home run additions. I think that to be a successful team, you need to use the portal well. You have to. I mean, I, I just think that you have to be willing to do that. And obviously, Coach Williams is doing it. He used it, but I just think you needed to go get a home run guy. Um, and I mean, this, this team is really good at what they're really good at. They rebound the basketball really well. They're a scrappy team. They find a way to win the ugly basketball games. They beat Kentucky. They beat a good Kentucky basketball team, um, embarrassed them on the boards. But at the end of the day, you got to be able to score. you got to be able to shoot. Shooting 39% from the field is not going to win basketball games. Going 12 of 22 from the free throw line is absolutely not going to win basketball games. You can't miss 10 free throws ever, ever. Not at the YMCA, not in the NBA, not at an intramural league. You can't miss 10 free throws. You're not going to beat anybody. And when you're playing a conference game against a solid Ole Miss team, you're not going to win if you miss 10 free throws. Um, and like I said, Ole Miss didn't necessarily have the best shooting day either. They shot 41% from the um, 41.7% from the field and from three, 73% from the free throw line. You just can't do that and expect to win basketball games. Uh, I mean, you know, you can't you can't win basketball games like that. You you do a good job holding an opponent to not shooting great from the field. Ole Miss, like I said, put up those numbers, but then you shoot like this: thirty percent from three, fifty four percent from the line, 
39% from the uh, field. It, you're, it's not a winning recipe. So I don't – it's getting to a point. Now, how many losses is that in SEC play? That's uh, one, two, three, yeah, four. I mean, it's getting to a point where I don't know – what you need to do, but something has to happen fast. And it, it it is frustrating. I was high on this team. I thought that Wade and Boots, and I know they've been fine, but I thought that the the supporting role around them, and listen, I mean, Anderson Garcia, I thought did a lot well in this game. He had six, six, three, and two and a block. I was happy with that. Um, Coleman has seven boards and seven points, but at the end of the day, you're going to lose basketball games if you don't find a way to score the basketball, to make your free throws. And that's what happened in this one. Um, the Aggies lose 71-68, fall under 500 in SEC play. And it's not going to get any easier. I mean, you still got to play. You got a trip to Knoxville. You got not, you got Tennessee coming into town. You got to play a good South Carolina team, a, a, a Florida team. That's fine. You got to go to Alabama. You got to uh, go a return trip to Ole Miss. You got to head to Georgia, who's been a little bit better. Mississippi State, it's not going to get any easier. So if you want to make the NCAA tournament, you need to figure something out and figure it out fast. And I think we're getting to a point where are there concerns about Buzz Williams? Are there concerns about this? I mean, I've been frustrated with this team on what it was supposed to be. It's supposed to be a top three team in the SEC. You got the projected SEC player of the year in Wade Taylor. I mean, and this year hasn't gone great. Now, we're not going to take one year and yell at Buzz. It, it happens. I mean, it, it, look at what's going on at Arkansas right now. I, I think Musselman, as much as I'm not a fan of his, I do think he's a good basketball coach. And, and the season over there is going absolutely horrible. Good coaches can have bad seasons. That stuff happens. But I also just think – that this team should be better than it has been. Hurts a little bit. It's frustrating that um, this season has gone the way it has. I, I, can they turn it around? It'll be interesting. I mean, you got to string some wins together. You got to beat some teams you're maybe not supposed to. You got to, can you sweep a Tennessee? It wouldn't be easy. But if you want to get in the tournament, you're going to have to do something before this really gets out of hand. This loss hurts. It really feels like. Now, I think that this is a panic button loss. Now, I think after this one, you've got to hit the panic button on this team. But no, so those that are concerned about Buzz, yeah, you can be upset about this season. I'm fine with that. You're more than welcome to be upset about this season, but I'm not concerned about Buzz going forward. Um, you know, he, he's not the type of coach that's going to bring in five stars. And I mean, you know, that's just not how he's how he's built. He's not going to bring in these super exciting guys. He's going to build his team, keep guys around for three, four years, and 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 have an old team that plays gritty basketball, rebounds well, and you know, and, and scores baskets around the rim. That's what he wants to do. So, no, I'm not concerned long term about Buzz, and I don't think anybody should be. But you're more than welcome to be frustrated with this season, as I am. But hopefully, like I said, this week you got uh, Florida. Or hold on, you got yeah, you got Florida coming up this week. Um, Missouri got a trip to Missouri. Then you got Tennessee coming up Saturday, the 10th. So tough basketball games coming up, ladies and gentlemen. But if Texas A&M wants to make the big dance, they're going to have to string some wins together. That is going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Aggies. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Everybody have a great rest of your day, and we will see you tomorrow.